Hello, this is Christian Idealism, and today we're going to be going over the combination problem for panpsychism. This is, of course, brought to you by Cal Allender. So first, what is panpsychism? Well, panpsychism is the view that consciousness is fundamental, but that consciousness is in all physical particles. In other words, that the fundamental building blocks of reality have consciousness. And so unlike physicalist reductionism, this does not face the hard problem of consciousness, since consciousness is simply fundamental to all of matter, and that consciousness is simply built up from the smaller part of consciousness that is present in all of matter. So in contrast to idealism, panpsychism is not the doctrine of the unreality of something outside consciousness. Rather, under panpsychism, there is a reality to something outside of consciousness, but that this reality simply has consciousness. In other words, that while consciousness is fundamental to both idealism and panpsychism, under idealism, everything is in consciousness. Whereas, under panpsychism, everything has consciousness. And so, what is the combination problem? Well, the basic problem asks this question. How do the experiences of fundamental physical entities such as quarks and photons combine to you the familiar sort of conscious experience that we know and love? The problem can be broken down into various arguments against panpsychism, which we're going to go over. So first is the anti aggression argument. So, just give you a little quote, No possible number of entities, call them as you like, whether forces, material particles, or mental elements, can sum themselves together. Each remain in the sum what it always was. And the sum itself exists only for the bystander who happens to overlook the units and have the sum as such, or else it exists in the shape of some other effect of an entity external to the sum itself. Let it not be that objected that H2 and O combined of themselves into water and henceforth exhibit new properties. They do not. The water is just the old atoms in the new position. The new properties are just their combined effects. When in this position, upon external media, such as our sense organs and the various agents on which water may exert its properties and be known. So this kind of goes into what's called mereological nihilism, which is the view that there is no such thing as composition objects, but rather everything just literally built up from the fundamental building blocks of reality. So this is the basic argument. Premise one, if consciousness of panpsychism is true, human consciousness is an aggregate. Premise two, aggregates do not objectively exist. Premise three, human consciousness objectively exists, therefore panpsychism constitutive panpsychism is false. And so this is kind of a less popular argument since it assumes, again, it assumes mere logical nihilism about the composition of objects, but it is one of the first ways in which that panpsychism can be refuted. And so you could say that panpsychism would be incompatible with mere logical nihilism. So now we're going to go to the second argument, which is the subject summon argument. Premise 1, for any group of subjects with certain experiences, it is conceivable that those experiences exist with their experiences and no other subject exists. Premise 2, for any group of subjects, it is conceivable that those subjects exist with their experiences and that no other subject exists, then this is possible. And for any group of subjects with certain experiences, it is possible that these subjects in S exist with their experiences and no other subject exists. So this is more of a conceivability argument, it's not really meant to be uh, persuasive, but basically it's that matter can have experiences without combining those experiences to produce a subject with unified experience. And so now we're going to get to the third argument, which is the structure combination problem. So premise one, if Russellian panpsychism is true, microphenomenal structure is isomorphic to microphysical structure. In other words, the mental is isomorphic to the physical. Premise 2, if constitutive panpsychism is true, microphenomenal and microphysical structure constitute macrophenomenal structure. Premise 3, microphysical structure constitutes only macrophysical structure. Premise 4, if microphenomenal structure is isomorphic to microphysical structure, then any structure constituted by microphenomenal structure and microphysical structure is isomorphic to a structure constituted by microphysical structure. Premise 5, macrophenomenal structure is not isomorphic to macrophysical structure, therefore constitutive panpsychism is false. And so basically, how can microphenomenal structure 
and macro and micro physical structure yield macro phenomenal structure. The problem is that as a whole, it's true that while micro physical structure can make up a macro physical structure, it's not the case that a micro phenomenal structure can combine into this macro physical structure, which is unified consciousness in the same sort of way. And so this argument, along with the two others I mentioned before, brings us to the crux of the combination problem. So again, Pitsychism posits that consciousness is fundamental and irreducible to particles. The notion of fundamental subatomic particles having consciousness would lead to small pixels of experience and not necessarily to a unified experiencer. While it's true that bodies are made of subatomic particles, this doesn't say anything about the structure of an experiencer. Subatomic particles are the pixels of the observable movements of consciousness, not necessarily the building blocks of consciousness itself. So, under panpsychism, this would necessarily imply that our unified experience is itself small pixels of experience, and thus you have a contradiction in the nature of the experiencer. And so, due to the combination problem, then our consciousness cannot be bought a bottom-up byproduct of micro consciousness rather our consciousness must be a top down and holistic to the universe as it cannot be reduced to smaller parts and so basically the problem is the fundamental problem of panpsychism is it tries to have this bottom up causation of consciousness whereas in reality what consciousness is truly like it's more of a top down sort of consciousness in the case of the whole universe and so that's kind of the fundamental issue with panpsychism. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. And have a nice day.